Lymatica, it's one of the coolest mods out there, but how do you actually use it? Well, let's jump into it. I'm not going to go over in depth how to install Lightmatica today. My goal here is to show you how to use Lightmatica, but in the description down below, we do have an in depth guide on downloading Lightmatica. Once you're there, click download, and that takes you to the Lightmatica download page. Here, you just want to click on files and find the version that you want. We're going to go with the most recent for this specific video here. And then once this download has completed, we're also going to need to get Molly Lib. Molly Lib is basically a library mod, a library lib mod that is needed for Lightmatica to work. It is also linked in the description down below. And with that downloaded, we need one more thing, which is the fabric mod loader itself. This is again linked down below, and we can come here and download it. I will be using the uh, universal jar to install it here, but that does mean I need to run Java as well as get the jar fix most likely. So first install Java, then run the jar fix, and then you'll be able to use that installer. From there, we can go ahead and find these in our downloads folder here. Here, and then we need to install fabric first so double click on fabric if you need to you can also right click and open it with Java and that will open up this installer make sure that the version of fabric that you want is selected and then click install from there we can go ahead and install these mods I like doing that using the Minecraft launcher itself sorry I'm going a little fast here but there is a much more in-depth guide that doesn't go uh, at the speed of light if you will for installing this this is about using Lightmatica more so than it is about installing it but I do want to cover this quickly once you're here we need to go and click installations Make sure that modded is checked. As you can see, there's fabric loader. Click on the folder icon that's here. And in here, you'll have a mods folder. If you don't, you can just go ahead and make one really fast by just creating a new folder and naming it mods. Then add Lightmatica and Molly Lib here. And there you go. That's all you need to know in order to get this installed. As soon as you open up Minecraft with fabric, it will go ahead and install Lightmatica or well, open with Lightmatica installed. While Minecraft's opening, have a notice from our company, Simple Game Hosting. Go to the first link in the description down below the breakdown to xyz slash sgh to start your very own minecraft server where you can easily use lightmatica and tons of other minecraft mods any minecraft mod you want really with your friends on a server you can easily add mods plugins mod packs and if you have any issues along the way there's expert live chat support to help you out so go check out simple game hosting at the first link in the description down below the breakdown to xyz slash sgh to start your minecraft server the simple way now we can go ahead and start working on using lightmatica in game now if you're in a single player player world using Lightmatica, I would recommend generally being in creative. It's it's not required. You can manually build things, but usually that would be the best. If you want to enable cheats or enable creative in a world that doesn't have cheats enabled, you can easily do that by hitting escape, going to open to land world, and then clicking this allow cheats on, and then starting the land world. That'll allow you to do things like slash game mode creative. This will also work on a server, a Minecraft server, for example, at simple game hosting, where you can super easily use this on any server you want, because Lightmatica is actually a local mod that doesn't require to be on the server for it to work, which is really, really cool, and it means we can use it on a server like this, which is what we're going to do, because we're going to be creating schematics for example of this little hut here and we're gonna move it somewhere else and create another one if you're on a server having op is usually the best thing because that will allow you to go into creative like i am here nevertheless let's go ahead and create a basically copy of this hut to do that we first want to open up the lightmatica menu and this is where everything in lightmatica is housed if you will Everything is in here. You can load schematics. You can do area editing. We're going to go through a lot of these different settings here, but don't be afraid to click around and see what else is here as well, because sometimes there's a very specific niche feature that I might not mention in a video like this that you may use quite often. So feel free to mess around with stuff, click around and see what's in here, different configurations and hotkeys and things like that, that you can learn different info overlays and stuff that you might be interested in. It's all here and worth configuring for however you want Lightmatica to be set up. What we want to do is actually go ahead and get a stick. Why do we want to get a stick? Well, think about it like this. The stick is the tool that allows us to control pretty much everything in Lightmatica because in the bottom left, we now have a uh, placement option here and we can change what this says down here from select placement, for example, by pressing control on our keyboard and scrolling. So if you press control and then scroll using the scroll wheel, you can see area selection, edit schematic, delete, move, grid, paste schematic in world, paste schematic in world, replace block, fill, and schematic placement. So there's all sorts of different stuff there. To make a schematic, for example, to select this, what we're gonna do is go to area selection here. And then we just select the corners. You can see we selected that one. And then we can come up here and I believe select this one. And now we've got this box. How are we selecting that? Well, we are clicking with the left click or right click and then 
clicking the other side with the left click. So right click over there, left click over here. But this isn't perfect. And how do we make it perfect where it includes all of this? Well, if we come down here and we press Alt and then scroll, we can actually move this up. As you can see, it's now right with the roof line there where we want it. If I'm uh, correct, everything else is generally good. Yeah, it seems everything else is generally good here on this house. Everything is now selected. If we wanted to, we could push out this side for example, by coming up here and doing that alt scroll thing. So alt scroll is going to move out this side, yada, yada. We can do all that. So as you can see, it moved it actually this way when I did alt scroll. So we want to come over here and move it that way. I think it's all based on the uh, the last selected position, which is going to be that blue block there. So there you have it. That's how you can kind of select different stuff. We wanted to move this down, come up here, alt scroll, move it down, move it up. All of that. Alt scroll is basically once you've made your selection, how you can fine tune it block by block. But nonetheless, with that now selected, and if you were to come over here and select the red one, by the way, right, like so, just I just clicked on that, clicked on the red block. I can move this, for example, up or out, right like so, and then up and down as well. So that can be done right like so. And actually we may do that because we don't need to go that far down for this house. So we'll go ahead and move this up one to where we're not grabbing the ground. We're just literally grabbing this square here. Now with this selected, what we want to do is press M to open the schematics menu. Then you want to go to the area selection browser here, and we want to go ahead and click on new selection. You can name this whatever you want. We're going to name this Small Village House. And then go ahead and click OK. We've now got this selection created. And then we can go ahead and click on Configure. From there, we want to go ahead and click the Save Schematic here in order to save this schematic. And we'll just go ahead and name it Small Village House here as well. Just that way it's the same. Right, like so, and then click save. And now we have a schematic saved here that we can then move around. We can select. We can place all of that stuff. If you add more schematics to your schematics folder in the .minecraft folder, I'll show you that towards the end of the video, you can select those here as well. They will be here when you open this up. But you can create as many schematics as you want and then we'll all show up here. From there, we can go ahead and come here to the area selection tool. If we come back all the area selection browser here and actually click that minus and it will remove it from the area selection browser and it's not here anymore. But if we go to load schematics, that small village house is still there because we did create that schematic, right? So just because we removed it from the area selection browser does not mean that it is no longer here. Now from there, we can go ahead and close out of this. This is still in the world. To remove it, I'll usually just uh, make a new selection. So basically left click and then right click on that same place and that removes that outline on that. But what if we then want to go ahead and add this back in somewhere else, right? We want to use schematics to place a schematic, for example, in this case, the house schematic that we created. We're going to go over here and uh, there's a nice little area kind of right here that I think this will be a good place to paste this for our tutorial. So how do we do that? Well, we want to go ahead and hit M because all of our stuff is here and we want to go to load schematics. That schematic that we had is right here, as you can see. Now, what's really cool about this is that just because it's here doesn't mean it's the only schematic. You can add more schematics, as I said, and let me show you how to quickly do that. Now, unfortunately, I will need to close out of Lightmatica in order to do this and specifically out of Fabric and Minecraft in general. Then you want to go to your Minecraft launcher. In the Minecraft launcher, you want to go back to that installations tab that is at the top, but we do not want to play Minecraft. All we want to do is go to the installations tab. And then once we're on the installations tab, find your fabric installation. Click on the folder icon that's here, and then you will have a schematics folder. If you don't have a schematics folder, you can create one, but if you've played Minecraft with Schematica or Lightmatica, excuse me, you will have a schematics folder. Open that up, and there it is, that small village house. You can take this and send it to a friend, and they can add it to their schematics folder and import it in-game. Or, alternatively, you can add other Lightmatic or schematic files here and use those in-game as well. Nevertheless, with that out of the way, and you know where those schematics are, are stored, let's go ahead and just jump right back in game and load that schematic and show you how to place it as well as all the other features around placing and using schematics in game. So here we are back in Minecraft and what we want to do is make sure we're on the correct tool in the bottom left with that control scroll wheel. We want to go to schematic placement here which is mode number two and uh, there are a ton of different ones. Schematic paste, schematic and world and all this stuff but we want schematic placement for this. Then we want to go ahead and hit M on our keyboard and from there we want to go into the load schematics. There's the schematic we created the small village house we go ahead and click load there it's now going to load in game right like so and to actually move this we can use that alt scroll wheel sort of setup that we used before as you can see alt scroll wheel to move it that way and move it back 
so on and so forth. And then if we wanted to place it this way, we can do that as well. We can Alt and Scroll Wheel to move it that way. I'm thinking uh, this is going to be a decent placement for this. As you can see, everything is good here. We do have a, uh, a torch there, and if you click, it will move the entire thing like we just did there, which is not what we wanted, but there we go. And uh, that, is, that is a good place to do this. Now, you could go ahead, start building this, right? If you wanted to build this, you could do that. But a lot of people, I think, just want to be able to paste this in game. To do this, go to M, open up the M menu, and then go to the configuration menu. In this generic tab, we want to go ahead and search for the paste replace behavior and make sure this is set to all. By default, it'll be set to none. You want to go ahead and set this to all here. Then we want to go to the hotkeys tab and we want to find the hotkey to do execute operation. So as you can see, it right now isn't set to anything, execute operation. If we go ahead and set this to K, you can set it to anything you want. I just typically set it to K and it works well. And then we can go ahead and come back here. Now, how do we do this? Well, once we're in game, if we press K, it will go ahead and paste this if we have uh, the correct tool selected. Specifically, we want to go ahead and scroll over to the grid paste or paste schematic in world, excuse me there, and then press K and there you go. It pastes it in game. If you don't have paste schematic in world, it won't work. As you, as you saw or probably heard, I was slamming K on my keyboard and it was not working. You need to go to the paste schematic in world and it pastes it. And now uh, this is good to go. You can come in here and you can see all of this stuff. And technically the schematic is still loaded. If you want to make that disappear, press M on your keyboard, go into loaded schematics and then click unload. And there you go. Now it's in game. That orange box doesn't appear when I open the door for example. Now, what if you didn't want to do this, right? What if you wanted to build this manually like it is survival mode? Well, let's go ahead and jump over to another place where we can place this. I think it'll look okay right here. And what do we do in that case? Well, we want to go ahead and do the same process. We want to go ahead and load the schematic, right? Like so. So load schematic. And then we want to come in and make sure we are in our schematic paste tool here. We can see here it is, and I want it kind of right in this area or so. Yeah, this looks okay. And then once it's here, what we want to do is go ahead and get up a build list. I like to have a material list. Now you can go ahead and build this, but if you want the material list, what you're going to want to do is go back into the M menu here, click on the schematic placements up here at the top, and then click configure. From here, you can come over here to the material list at the bottom over here on the right, and then you can see all of the materials, and most importantly, you can turn on the info HUD for materials as well as the hide available versus you know show available materials and all that you can customize this all you want but you can see all the different blocks that you need make sure you go out and grab those and everything like that one of the coolest way things about schematic in my opinion is this but if we go back in game we can see in the bottom right we have this and, and can place them and all that stuff right alongside as we're going and keep the materials that we need right up front and center so there you have it that is how you can do this but obviously I like to uh, I like to just uh, just paste I think that makes it a lot easier. So, nevertheless, that is how you can use Schematica or Lightmatica in Minecraft. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Super in-depth sort of guide here. Really wanted to make sure we covered everything that, um, you know, could have or you could need when it comes to schematics in-game crazy all that can be done. Um, one thing I did want to mention is rotation. You can come in here and rotate schematics and uh, make them place in a different way. For example, as you can see, I rotated that 90 degrees. And now if we come over here, we have this uh, facing, if you will, the other way, which uh, the way that I placed it's a little weird, but this way right here would make more sense if we, for example, moved it right over here and uh, you know pasted it down. In theory, we should be able to uh, just kind of replace this and it work. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Uh, we're kind of Kind of off the wall there. Boom, there you go. So now it replaced it, and it actually looks pretty good this way. A little more natural right up here, running straight in. So there you have it. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Enjoy your Schematica, Lightmatica in-game. Really, really cool mod. One of the coolest mods in Minecraft, allowing you to easily import worlds and import you know builds from other builds using schematics. So we'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace.